Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Davide. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and thank you for this this late call for you on a Friday evening. But uh, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Well, I'm Davide Bellona. I'm a backend developer uh, based in Italy. I started working with .NET around 10 years ago. It was 2014, if I'm not wrong. And also, I'm a Microsoft MVP for developer technologies because uh, of my blog and uh, uh, talks around the world, et cetera, et cetera. So that's always a popular it, question. Is that because you're a relatively, and when, when did you get your MVP? Uh, it was last year. Okay. I, if I renew my, my word, uh, this one should be the, the second one. So, the second one. So, so with this, you know, it's a relatively new kind of what was your path to becoming an MVP? Because people, I'm sure you're getting questions new MVPs generally do. Yeah. Like, what did you do? What would you do differently? Yeah, uh, actually, it was mostly because uh, of my uh, of my blog and of, because of Twitter, because uh, uh, I used to share a lot of um, tips about C-sharp and programming, etc., and help other developers, uh, even just directly in uh, direct messages. Uh, so somehow uh, my my blog uh, stood out uh, the crowd and uh, they decided to to work my my effort well I'll say it's a very clean blog I, I, you were talking about we were talking about you know, the organization of our office spaces my i have a very cluttered blog yours is a very clean interface yeah yeah i found that uh, that gatsby team uh, no right now it's uh, with Hugo that uh, yeah that Hugo team uh, on on uh, GitHub. So I decided to customize it, uh, tweak uh, some some parts, uh, and they're yeah, pretty pretty happy with it. So it's I, I, a good friend that's trying to convince me to move my site over to Gatsby. Uh, it's a nice. Mm, it's yeah. It's actually a lovely platform. I just didn't find uh, um, a good team for me so it was just a matter of layouts and stuff like that otherwise it was uh i used it for several years and it was uh, great actually yeah it's uh well i i know i don't want to go like down a side uh, uh comment there's like but i mean it's as far as it's your know, performance of the site i mean it's fantastic for that way but as far as add-ons and you know extensions and other things it's yes Hello. limited so I mean, there's always a balance in those things but well, so yep. what kind of what what are your topics uh, these days? What are you writing about, talking about? I well, uh, my code, uh, my blog is called uh, Code for It. Uh, of course, it is just uh, um, a sort of pun for Italy, uh, IT, and stuff like that. Uh, and it's mainly focused on .NET, C Sharp, and stuff like that, uh, uh, mostly Azure. And currently, I'm publishing four articles uh, a month every every tuesday so mm -hmm. uh every other tuesday i publish one in deep in depth uh, article about uh, something like dot net or some technology or stuff like that then the other weeks are one for a, a quick c sharp tip so stuff like that you can read maybe in just one or two minutes and uh, another one is for software architecture because uh, i found that topic terribly interesting so i decided to mm, Learn stuff, learn more stuff, and more in depth than maybe some other articles that you can find uh, online. Because I want to understand how uh, things work uh, uh, actually in um, in depth. So it's just uh, a, yeah, I delve into a specific topic and try to extrapolate everything I need to to know and and curious. Basically, yeah, it's just because I'm curious of stuff. Yeah. Well, I think that's a way that a lot of MVPs are. It's like we go in, we want to break down a topic, want to understand kind of all the, the various components. Uh, do you get a lot of interaction, a lot of with the, with the community, with people asking questions that you expand on your topic? Uh, it depends on the yeah. It depends on the platform and on the on the article. So mostly on LinkedIn, I get most of the interactions, uh, and on Reddit, uh, sometimes there are harsh comments, but 
Never mind. Wait, they they harsh, can they harsh can. comments on Reddit? What? <laughs> but, uh, no, no, I could not expect it. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm shocked, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, surprise Pikachu. Uh, and no, and it's I found it pretty interesting because uh it's actually those comments that drive my uh, curiosity and also the content of my blog because uh, when you publish something um and receive some comments or some some notes on uh, on your content, this uh, this triggers my curiosity and mm, makes me search for more in the in detail uh, parts or um, topics and stuff like that. So it's just a, a circle. I create uh, uh, somebody uh, replies and comments, etc. I found new ideas uh, and create some more content. So it's just a circular a uh, economy yeah. for yeah. Well, that's why I, I often say that, you know, it's uh, one of the uh, worst things you can do to a speaker is like if I'm presenting, if there are no hands raised, if there are no questions, there's no comments. I'm like, am I hit? Am I a miss? I mean, I have no idea, but I do the same thing. Like I have sessions, I have topics that I've like the title has not changed, but because of questions that I've had conversations, you know, afterwards during sessions, I've modified the content. And so each time I give the presentation, it's different. It's slightly different based on that feedback. I'd like to think mm. it's better each time. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it makes sense. Uh, when I I deliver sessions and there are no questions from the, from the crowd, I usually ask questions to the crowd. To the crowd. So it's, it becomes more than a session, a uh, conversation. And I try to understand their points uh, or, uh, maybe just learn from their experience uh, by asking them questions so i found it uh, a, a good a good way to interact with the with the audience yep that's a great tip as well so uh, i see that you're also you are speaking uh, uh, uh well you've got what was it six or seven events this year oh yeah yeah something like that most of them were uh, uh remote events so some meetups uh, one in south africa and another one uh, uh, it was uh, uh, in uh, uk but i'm pretty happy that this one uh, this year i managed to deliver an in-person talk uh, in vienna it was my very first international uh, talk uh, again in person so it was a, a fantastic uh, experience and i hope that ne a next great, year will be even great better city to go to as well so yes I love the yes indeed in fact uh, i decided to take some days of vacations and visit the city so it was a, a great experience uh, both as a tourist and as a speaker so see so do, do you feel like is it is it necessary for your well I, I, you're still relatively new as an mvp do you is public speaking like something that you're you feel like you have to do or are you are, do you like it do you enjoy it are you planning to do more of that kind of stuff i don't think it's necessary but i actually just love it because uh, in fact as i say uh, i love the interaction with the the audience and learning from others and uh you know it's just a fantastic uh, um feeling to to be sometimes in the center of the of the tension on of the of others so just you know sometimes even the ego wants uh wants just some bit some a little attentions so even that i, I cannot uh I, i'm not of course a superstar but when i there are when i see that are at least i don't know five people or something like that it's just a great uh great stuff for me so it's just the love of the stage and the sharing of knowledge so it's both of the words yeah no, I think it, it very much, uh, I, again, that's a common, you know, uh, uh, pattern with MVPs is that, you know, we lo love sharing, love to have the interaction. Again, one of the most difficult things for me as a speaker when there's not the interaction where I do the same thing, I'll ask questions, but where you get like heads nodding, but nobody's really engaging. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it makes it it's difficult, difficult, but uh, there's, but there's something to be said about presenting to five, 10 people and having deeply engaging versus to a, an audience of a thousand people where you're just presenting outward. Yeah. I prefer the smaller group. I prefer to have the yes, interaction. I, um, I know selfishly it's like, cause I get more out of it. Not just, you know, here's what I'm yeah. sharing, but I'd rather have the conversation. Yeah, exactly. It's the same for me. It's the exact same thing for me. Yeah.
Well, so and, and um, maybe you've not been asked this, but uh, you know, any advice for people that are interested in learning more about becoming an MVP? Like, what would you? How do you respond to that? Like, hey, what did you do? How, how, what can I do to become an MVP? How do you respond to that? I have to say, just share your knowledge, or at least uh, serve the community. So I, I'm not sure it's necessary to share knowledge or something like that but maybe you can organize events uh, or um, i don't know facilitate some uh, some some parts some events or share other uh, content or i don't know organize a newsletter or something like that um so yeah this is a good starting point but of course if you if you love sharing content uh, or maybe you want to try it's a good a good st- a way to to start your path to the MVP award. So uh, it's n- I don't think it's necessary, but um, of course it helps a lot. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. It's well, I always tell people it's like because uh, there, there are some people that are just uh, you know uh, deathly afraid of speaking in public, and and there are MVPs that have achieved that status through forums, like never public speaking. They didn't write a book but they are regular contributors. And I, I tell people just to find what you love doing and then mm-hmm. just be consistent with that. Yes, yes, indeed. Even just replying on Stack Overflow and, uh, I don't know, uh, working on some uh, repository on uh, GitHub, oh, for sure it, uh, it helps. So it's a good way if you don't like uh, uh, being on the center of the tension. So if you don't like... Uh, uh, if you're shy and don't want to, I don't know, create uh, YouTube videos or public speaking or stuff like that, uh, of course, helping the community uh, from that other platforms uh, for sure, it's uh, it's a good way. Yeah, it's a great way to uh, Stack Overflow uh, out of Microsoft Tech Community to also start uh, rubbing elbows with the Microsoft, the product and engineering teams as well, and the marketing mm-hmm. teams that are, yep. that are out there. It always helps to have you know Microsoft contacts. Uh, since you have to have an MVP or a Microsoft person refer you into the program. So kind of to conclude, to wrap up, I, I, I also like to get a sense of like your community activities. So, so you've done these virtual events, the one in person. Are you involved in your local user group? Sometimes, uh, because uh, here in Turin, uh, there is a local group, uh, but uh, if I can, at least one, time of, of every year i try to participate as a speaker uh but of course uh, the community here is pretty small in conference conform- to uh compared to some other com- communities but yeah if i can uh, i try to help uh, maybe not just not not in only the one in Turin, but also the the other ones in uh, in italy so i don't know i, I recently participated in um uh, session for UG.net, which is another community here in, in Northern Italy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was cool because it was in, at Microsoft uh, offices in Milan. Uh, so it's uh, it was a great experience. Um, but yeah, of course, it's having even those small, smaller communities uh, for sure helps. And it's also, uh, let's say, um, a gym for your better, uh, for your greater audiences. So you start smaller, you maybe you can present uh, if, uh, a topic for the first time uh, and see how it goes and maybe just uh, fine tune uh, some parts of the top of the presentation uh, for your future um, talks. Well, that's always, if you are participating and you know the five, 10 people that are showing up to the monthly user group, it's much easier to present to them and get that feedback before taking mm-hmm. it and proposing it to it's it's because it's relatively easy to get in to speak especially at a virtual event where if you've got a great abstract and a great topic the problem is then when it gets selected <laughs> if you've yes you know, if you're nervous about that but it's uh and that's why another thing i always recommend to people I'd like reach out to the mvps in your community and say hey look i've got a session i've got some abstracts would you take a look would you give me your opinion on this or i recorded a video of this and tell me your thoughts on that because I love getting those kinds of requests because as an organizer, I mean, I, we're always looking for new speakers. We'd love to support, you know, new people into the community. So it's, you know, just don't be shy, I guess, is the, it's the hardest part yes. is that first step. 
Yes, for sure. Uh, in fact, I, I'm not really a shy, quite shy person. And uh, the very first experience was quite traumatic, I know, because uh, I I um, tried to be uh, fun, uh, funny and uh, deliver some jokes, uh, etc. But it was too... <laughs> to yeah to fact. and i i <laughs> couldn't yeah. deliver just and i was single joke it was a terrible <laughs> experience so yeah don't, don't overdo it for your very first uh, sessions then when you become more confident uh, of course uh, it for sure it helps uh, just to create some kind of bond with the, the audience so yeah uh no that's that's great i we i think we've all had similar experiences i said some some of my uh you know, uh, worst standup of uh, my comedy was where I, I tried, tried too hard. And yeah, yeah. but uh, well, it, listen, I really appreciate your your time and, and getting to meet you. And for folks that want to reach out and connect with you, where are you most active in social? Where can people find you? Well, for sure on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, they're both the account uh, Bellone Davide. So it's quite easy. It's my last name and first name. And also on my personal blog, uh, codeforit.dev, uh, for sure. You, I, I usually reply to all the comments uh, uh, in every of those platforms. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Well, I, of course, I'll have all the links out on my blog. It'll be out on uh, YouTube and on the podcast as well. So, uh, Davide, really appreciate your time today. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Nice, it was nice to meet you. Wow.